Welcome to the Sweden-US Green Transition Initiative. We are very happy that you have found this session and hope that you will find it interesting and hopefully even engaging. The Sweden-US Green Transition Initiative was initiated by Business Sweden. They had the idea that we could do more within sustainability together with the other actors active in the US. And they find uh, their collaboration with Energy Agency, the Innovation Agency and the Embassy here in the United States and agreed to start the Sweden-US Green Transition Initiative. And here we are. My name is Linda Andrén. I am heading up this initiative. And we are a team based in Washington DC and in Palo Alto. Today we will talk about what is the Green Transition Initiative. And we will have a panel and we will also have our ambassador talking. But first, what is the Sweden-US Green Transition all about? Well, we are focusing on four thematic areas and these areas are also correlating to where the big emissions occur. So we are talking about electromobility, sustainable industry, sustainable energy, much needed for the green transition, and smart green buildings. We are also working with eight work streams and you can say that these are matching finding the opportunities or the problems that we can solve with the opportunities that we have. So it's kind of matchmaking. But we cannot do it alone. We need collaboration, both within Team Sweden and with the agencies behind us, but also in a wider context. We test institutes and Swedish startups and incubators and also the large corporations, because this is something we need to do together. So with this, uh, I think that you have an idea of what it is all about. It is about increasing export and investments to Sweden as well, but we only have a green focus. So everything we do needs to be about moving green transition forward. And we can only do it in collaboration. And now I would like to welcome the ambassador of Sweden to the United States, Karin Olofsdotter. Thank you for inviting me to say a few words on the green transition in the US. I'm really fortunate to lead the Embassy of Sweden in Washington DC, and I've done so for the past five and a half years. And it's been really interesting years, ups and downs, of course. Today, the world is at a time of crisis. It's a difficult time. Russia's ongoing invasion of Ukraine with so many lives lost. Partly because of the war, we are also facing an energy crisis in Europe and an economic downturn. We're also in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. And then we face the climate crisis, one of the most urgent issues of our time. No country can solve the global climate crisis alone, and it is crucial that we have global frameworks in place to solve the challenges we face, such as the Paris Agreement. We are, of course, extremely happy uh, that the US has rejoined the Paris Agreement when President Biden took office two years ago. U.S. announced that the, uh, that the same spring, a new national goal of reducing, reducing its emissions 50 to 52% in 2030 compared to 2005 years level. Also, U.S. hoped to reach net zero emissions by 2050 and have clean electricity production by 2035. The political will in the White House is there. We have also seen legislation come out of Congress. The summer of 2021, Congress passed the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act and the CHIPS and the Science Act the summer of 2022, both with bipartisan support. Much in focus is a revitalization of domestic manufacturing, creating good paying American jobs, strengthening American supply chains, and accelerating the industries of the future. The bipartisan infrastructure bill, for example, includes investments to build a national network of electrical vehicle chargers and upgrades to its power infrastructure with new transmission lines. The last Congress passed the Inflation Reduction Act with 369 billion US dollar investments in this, uh, this past August. Although no Republicans voted for the IRA, we can see that these investments will benefit the entire United States. For the first time, the US has co a comprehensive climate legislation. It's an important signal for the US administration. The US is finally has a plan to tackle the climate challenge domestically. Focus is also, of course, to bring home jobs, to revitalize US manufacturing, 
to lessen the dependency on other countries, like China, and increase its own energy security. The US have now entered an implementation phase. A message that is worth repeating in our engagement with the US is that ongoing green is the path to create sustainable growth and jobs. We act in the interest of our environment and for our people, but our industry also realizes that it's good business. In the US, uh, we have noticed increased ambition, not only at the federal level, but also importantly at state and city level. Cities and states uh, will use the federal investments to spur actions, maybe tax breaks or other incentives. Several states and cities are already leading the way with emissions trading schemes, net zero targets, clean energy standards, and future bans on fossil fuel driven cars. We see great opportunities to engage with various actors at multiple levels. At the federal level, for example, the Department of Energy has received a lot of new funding to support new projects that can drive the clean energy transition. The Office of Clean Energy Demonstrations, OCED, was established in December 2021. The idea is to deliver clean energy demonstration projects, including clean hydrogen, long duration energy storage, and industrial decarbonization, at, and more at scale. Another example uh, is Department of Transportation and three other agencies that have launched a US national blueprint for transportation decarbonization including strategies and actions to remove all emissions from the transportation sector by 2050. All these areas are aligned with Sweden's interests. The US are tackling the same challenges that we are. We realize uh, the challenges with the Inflation Reduction Act uh, and by American provisions. It is an issue that we are engaging diplomatically with the US on. Hopefully we can find solutions that are not that are good for both our countries, businesses, and most importantly, our shared environment. If we work together, we can accomplish much, much more. Embassy of Sweden is launching a new exhibition. It's called Pioneering the Possible at House of Sweden this March. We will highlight our industry and its ways to innovative uh, to meet our climate targets. We will talk about our policies that enable companies and industries to contribute to the green transition and also about investments in research and development, but also education, training and job security to adapt to a new market. These are all stories worth telling in the US. We also see uh, this as a platform for further conversation with US actors. We will have a first conversation on industrial decarbonization. Several of Sweden's different agencies are engaging with the US on its green transition efforts. Our embassy, together with our consulate in New York, have a green transition as one of our top priorities in our diplomacy work. We plan to open a new consulate in San Francisco this year, in a state that is known for its climate leadership. So, together with Business Sweden, Vinova and the Swedish Energy Agency, we realized that we can be better together. We joined forces and created the Sweden-US Green Transition Initiative to enhance our engagement with US counterparts, learn from each other and accelerate the green transition. We are very, very excited about this partnership. Thank you so much for listening to me. So welcome to the payment part of this session. I'm so happy to have very nice guests here today from the founding organizations. And we had the opportunity to utilize that they are actually here in Washington DC. So we could combine and do this video recording for Sweden Innovation Days while you were here. So happy to have you. Eva Hanius Olin, Senior Advisor Energy and Environment for the Embassy of Sweden and you're based here in Washington, D.C. as well. And Fredrik Göte, your program manager for international cooperation and country manager for U.S. and Canada for Vinova, Swedish Innovation Agency. And then, last but not least, Dr. Verena Adamheit, your senior business developer for international markets and country manager for U.S. for our energy innovation. Happy to have you here. Thank you for participating. 
pleasure. So the first question that we thought we could elaborate a bit upon is what is the focus of your agency in relation to green transition in the US? Eva, what are your thoughts about this? Yes, uh, uh, as uh, Linda said, I work at the Swedish Embassy here in Washington, D.C. And uh, at any embassy, you know, we, uh, our mission is to promote and monitor Swedish interests. Uh, this is also true for our embassy here in Washington, D.C. Green transition is one of our top priorities for the embassy. I'm in the trade and economic affairs section, and I would say green transition applies to most all of my colleagues, although I'm the one uh, that work with it uh, more on a daily basis. We follow, of course, the policy developments here in Washington, D.C., but also at state and uh, city level. Uh, what are the U.S. doing when it comes to green transition? We try to send that in reports back to Stockholm um, to, to, for them to learn a little bit more what's going on and also to see what kind of opportunities that Sweden would have with the U.S. Here in Washington, we are also very happy that we have the House of Sweden, which is one of our flagship embassies uh, in the world. And with that, uh, we are able to have a big uh, public diplomacy program. Uh, we host events uh, on a regular basis, often with the topic of green transition and sustainability, climate change issues. Uh, we'll have one here in a few days uh, on industrial decarbonization. Mm. We do that uh, while we're opening um, an exhibit uh, uh, here at the, at the house uh, called Pioneer the Possible, which is also about accelerating uh, the green transition. We want to showcase how Swedish industry innovate and tackle the climate change challenge. Uh, we have very good solutions, uh, of course, that we want uh, tell, to tell a story about to the U.S. So we're very excited about that coming up. And lastly, but not least, we also work a lot uh, on the green transition area when it comes to our communication. Uh, we do a lot with social media and so forth on our team. Thank you. Yes. And Verena, what, what is the energy agency doing in this area? Yes, generally speaking, the Swedish energy agency is working for a sustainable energy system in the future. And as regards internationalization, we contribute or try to contribute not only to reducing global CO2 emissions, but also to growing low carbon economy. And as regards the US, we identified three Swedish key strengths which we want to focus on. It's um, sustainable buildings, it's mobility, and it's smart grids. And we decided to focus on some states which we really want to create long-term relationships with. And this, this is New York, it's California and Texas. And uh, on top, we are also looking, of course, into batteries and hydrogen. Um, and uh, in everything we do, we try to speak about knowledge and competence transfer. We speak about showcasing best practices from Sweden to show what is possible, uh, what we really do in Sweden already. And then for the third, it's to bring together companies. It's the matching of companies to, as I said, create long-term relationships on various levels. Mm. And how uh, is Innovation Agency coming into this? What are you doing here? Well, I, I share a lot that uh, the previous speakers has, have, have said. And generally speaking, from Vinova's point of view, is, is uh, we look at the green transition that uh, we can position Sweden as a key partner uh, in the uh, US green transition. Uh, we see that we have a possibility of connecting Swedish companies uh, to stakeholders within the green solutions ecosystems here in the US. And we also see a, a, uh, an opportunity to leverage uh, for growth within highly competitive uh, sectors as well. Um, and of course, uh, we want to foster research and innovation collaborations between the U.S. and Sweden as well. And uh, how come you wanted to start the Green Transition Initiative to be based here with a team in the U.S.? Verena, what are your thoughts about that? Yes, um, we see a lot of interest from both companies and research institutions from both sides of the Atlantic to engage in more collaboration. And with GTI, we hope to establish a platform enabling just cooperation. And I guess we all agree upon that we have a common ground to, to build on, but there's more to do. And we have now 
a window of opportunity with high ambitions both in the US and in Sweden to create this sustainable energy system. So I'd say together we are stronger. Mm. And Fredrik? Yeah, I, I totally agree with Verena. Uh, I would say the same thing. Uh, stronger Team Sweden when it comes to research and innovation, uh, that we have a common ground, that we work together from from the research part up until commercialization, uh, where we are uh, strong as well. Uh, we see the uh, added value in working together, uh, and we have the same uh, approach towards uh, the green transition as well. Yeah. And you, Eva? Echo what Verena and Fredrik says as well, but uh, I see GT uh, GTI uh, very much as a, a response to an increased ambition in the United States. Uh, uh, where the U.S. is kind of back uh, on, on the global arena after a few years when they withdrew from the Paris Agreement. So we're of course very excited that they're back in Paris and they've had a set and high ambition for what they want to meet. They also want to be net, have net zero emissions by 2050. And they are key play they emit a lot, but they're also very innovative and have a lot of good solutions here. So I think we can learn from each other. Uh, we believe that Sweden has a lot of good solution within the those areas that, that the U.S. are tackling. We're tackling similar challenges. So again, why not work together? Uh, and with the GTI, we're all doing our separate tracks of things in the United States. And I think there are a lot of projects that we could benefit by working together on instead of separately. So I think that's kind of the reasoning behind. Mm -hmm. And can we further elaborate on how is GTI strengthening uh, the green transition and this Team Sweden in the U.S.? Fredrik, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I would say that uh, by working together and uh, have a common umbrella with a dedicated budget, uh, it would also act as a hub for Swedish and American companies, agencies and partner organization. And this will increase the impact of the participating organizations, uh, existing activities and drive new initiatives and consolidate the Swedish offerings through uh, Team Sweden as well. Uh, I would say that it's it's kind of a one-stop shop for a lot of things that we have to offer. Eva, do you want to fill in as well? Yes, again, uh, I mean, um, U.S. is a big market um, for Swedish exporting companies, for example. Uh, again, we already have very strong um, collaboration between within policy. It could be academia, innovation. Um, we have. Uh, Sweden invests a lot uh, in the United States and the U.S. also invests in Sweden. So we already have existing, um, what should I say, networks or uh, engagements, initiatives uh, that I think if we, again, um, we work together, we can strengthen them. And uh, I feel at the embassy, you know, we can open a lot of doors. Uh, we can pick up things that is of interest that we hear uh, what's going on at city or state level, but sometimes we don't have the time to run with it. For example, we had uh, a few years ago, right before COVID, we had 15 U.S. cities travel to Sweden uh, to learn a little bit about uh, waste management, how Sweden is doing. And uh, we've been trying to keep in touch with these cities and we try have had uh, follow up events with them. but. I'm only one person, and um, so I, I see GTI as um, a help in that our uh, the embassy work uh, to can can dig deeper into already existing things that we have governments. Yeah, would be great if mm -hmm. we can take those uh, leads and go ahead with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Verena. Yep. Uh, lead, but so right. So um, mm -hmm. again, I can only echo, but I guess. I'd like to emphasize the strength of GTI. It's four dedicated resources located in the US working for the green transition. That's four more resources than we as the energy agency have in the US. So um, GTI can leverage on the activities, the existing activities that we have, but also reach out to national initiatives back in Sweden and ask what are you interested in, what do you want us to do? Mm. And also you named the word hub and I strongly agree with this because uh, GDI can also be a hub for making new connections which we by ourselves wouldn't have the resources to deal with. So I think that's uh, the most important that you're here. Mm. You are based in the US. 
Yeah, and then with this uh, investment, it comes expectations as well, right? So what are your expectations going forward? Mm -hmm. Eva, do you have any? Well, we are happy now that we finally have the full team um, um, uh, in place. So we're excited to see what you guys can, can do um, for this. It's a really good cause. And I guess my expectations are that you will, uh, I know, I don't, I know that you have some exciting ongoing projects with cities and about demonstration projects. So we, of course, would like to see more of that. And uh, we will help any way we can here at the embassy. Uh, and I feel like we already have a great, uh, great connection. You are here. Uh, GTI sits here at the House of Sweden. Uh, so we worked a lot with you already. So we're looking forward to, to continue that. Thank you. And Verena? Um, we're from the Swedish Energy Agency are mostly important in the support of small and medium enterprises in R&D collaboration and green investments, uh, I'd say. So we hope that GTI can establish pilots and concrete projects to accelerate the green transition. And uh, maybe also coming back to what you said, Eva, to connecting to pre-COVID, um, I would like to welcome stakeholders from cities, from institutions, from companies to Sweden to show what we are doing and uh, also to invite to use Sweden as a test bed for new projects. So uh, welcome to Sweden from uh, our side also. Mm. And Fredrik, do you want to add to this? Yeah, I can just add a few things that uh, we from uh, Vinova think it's, it's uh, our expectations ahead are at, that uh, we should be able to promote Swedish solutions for a uh, sustainable world, uh, which is very important for us, and accelerate uh, the collaboration within research and innovation, hopefully, and provide more support to SMEs entering the US market. Uh, and also uh, see Sweden as an attractive investment destination for uh, green solutions as well. So this is a rather unique collaboration as well, uh, to have the four agencies backing the Green Transition Initiative, and it's in within the Sweden-US context. If, if there is someone that wants to start something similar, maybe in other countries, what should they think about? What, what would your advice be? Verena, do you have any specific advice? What yeah, I just say do it. <laughs> We're learning a lot from each other and from collaborating. And I think what we discover now, but we can discuss it, is that we are not strengthening only bilateral collaboration and this connection, but also strengthening our ecosystem back at home because there are a lot of new connections that are made, new pilots that are coming up. So um, that's happening a lot at home and abroad. So I think this is quite interesting to to discover more. And Fredrik, you, you get the last uh, words on this <laughs> panel. Wow. Uh, well, I, I can see that if there are uh, common areas of interest for uh, different agencies or other parts in Sweden that uh, can join together and see uh, a national interest in that, it's uh, very positive and it's gives a greater impact uh, to Team Sweden, I would say, uh, and it's easier for us to uh, offer a variety of services uh, depending on what we're doing, but definitely something uh, we would recommend others to do as well. I think you have brought up also the um, system pilots or showcasing, and that is one of the things that we are really trying to do, because I do think we need the positive stories about what Green Transition is all about and it's uh, showing solutions to, to the challenges that we have. And uh, the last part of this session will be to look at one system pilot. So we will hand over to Marcus in San Francisco. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining. Thanks for having Thank us. You. Thank you, thank you. So yes, we are back. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so now just to frame it a little bit about this project, uh, which is a system pilot that we aim to launch together with uh, the city of San Jose um, to create carbon-free last mile delivery. 
Uh, and just so that you will understand the, the goals of the city and also some of the challenges and opportunities that arise, we have Andrea. So the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. Andrea Horna, I'm the City of San Jose Climate Smart and Electric Mobility Lead, uh, working, can you hear me? Closer. Closer? Yeah. Better? Thank you. Um, so we are, we're working to try to accelerate um, electric mobility and sustainable mobility in the City of San Jose. So uh, San Jose has set very ambitious uh, climate goals. Uh, we want to reduce community-wide greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and become carbon neutral by 2030. And for that, we probably need to electrify about 90% of our current uh, you know, vehicle uh, passenger fleets of all kinds. Uh, but we don't want to um, electrify the status quo. Uh, we also have set um, ambitious mode shift goals um, to try to provide more sustainable um, options to move around the city. Um, so we set up a goal of 60% uh, of all passenger vehicles to be electric by 2030 um, and to achieve a drastic uh, reduction in single occupancy vehicles in the city. So for mode shift, that's probably one of the most challenging um, issues that we have right now. Um, it takes time and it takes a lot of money uh, to transform uh, our streets and make them more human center and make them safer and make them more comfortable for all um, types of users. Uh, but we're working on that. In the meantime, we're trying to um, kind of like a, a, a increase the pace of deployment of electrical vehicle infrastructure around the city, taking advantage of all of the stackable incentives that are available right now for the purchase of EVs um, and just trying to supply uh, infrastructure in communities that are don't have access to it are underserved um, and are experiencing perhaps higher levels of pollution because they live near highways um, so trying to tackle uh, all of these all of these issues at once um, so we've been doing um, a lot of stuff we've been uh, trying to um, increase our uh, policy stances in terms of uh, promoting um, transit uh, so we passed our transit first policy to allow us to invest more uh, in transit facilities, even though the city does not uh, operate transit in the city of San Jose. So we're exploring options like um, developing um, micro transit um, electric solutions or zero emission freight solutions, for example. Um, we also are um, just to prove a transportation demand management uh, program for the city that would require new development um, to include uh, TDM measures um, to try to uh, provide more options for, for our residents and visitors. Um, we're also piloting new technologies to test uh, vehicles and systems that would help us reduce emissions in the short term. We've had a sidewalk um, delivery pilot uh, a few months back um, and we're just trying to figure out uh, what are the best technology-based solutions that will help us accelerate the pace of what we're doing. Um, however, that may not be enough. Uh, so we're trying to figure out how can we compound um, all of the proposed solutions that we are uh, um, thinking about in the city of San Jose in one place. And that's how the Zero Emission Neighborhood Initiative came out. So we have a neighborhood in the city of San Jose called the Santee Neighborhood that is now designated as a Zero Emission Neighborhood where we plan to put together a number of initiatives uh, with the hope that these efforts combined will actually have more impact than a single measure in the entire city. Um, so San Jose is uh, the largest city in the Bay Area the third larger, largest city in the state of California, and we have over a million people. So how do we manage to uh, develop a lot of things in one place in a short period of time to try to scale that to other areas of the city? So that's what we're trying to, to achieve um, with, this, with this pilot that just started. Thank you, Andrea. <coughs> take that. Take that one. And that one. Thank you. 
Uh, and yeah, you're the third largest city in the uh, state and the 10th largest city nationwide. Yeah. Wow, yeah. So it's a big city uh, with, uh, of course, a lot of opportunities and challenges. And a company that would like to help cities to uh, create a carbon-free freight or last mile delivery is, of course, Cake. Yeah. So I want to hear a little bit about your thoughts and maybe your envisions of how this can be done. Cool. Do I need the mic? Yeah. Maybe it's a good idea. I have some notes here as well. Nice to see you. You're not falling asleep yet. No. Of course. You're not falling asleep yet. No. no. Okay, thank you. Because if you don't get that answer, it's kind of, kind of getting a little bit scary. So, uh, have you ever heard of cake? And we're not talking about the coffee break. No, yes, a little bit of both. We, we make electric motorcycles and then we make electric mopeds and also e-bikes. Uh, bikes made for businesses, made for end consumers. And we've seen a, a fast and, and rapidly growth since 2018 when we were founded by Stefan Ytterbon, a Swedish guy that also started POC, POC. You know the helmets? Do you know the helmets? And then did you know that POC is actually a piece of cake? So that was a piece of the cake and this is the rest of the cake. If you didn't know that, now you know. That's also why the logo is just as the logo is. Um, so uh, the story behind us was really about exploring with respect. You know, you want to get out there. You want to like uh, adrenaline junkie, uh, kind of. You know, we were all skiers back in the days. and. I had a travel company back in the days called X Travel, did skiing and surfing, and we want to kind of keep the world as beautiful as the world could be. Uh, and then we're a little bit too old and lazy to actually pedal ourselves, so we thought, okay, let's let's put an electric engine on this one and go out and have some fun. So we started from scratch, like looking at the wheels and, and the tires. Should they be like um, environmental friendly so that they don't? take too much of the, whatever you call it, the dust up, you know? Um, so we put a trail saver tires on, and we started doing all these different things. And then we were questioned like, so, but how, how sustainable is this? You know, there's been plenty of people saying that, how sustainable is really a electric car, you know? And what, what we would say we're doing right now, together with Vattenfall in Sweden, where we're trying to build a totally fossil free bike. A lot of people say, you can't do that. And honestly, no, that's going to be quite hard, like total, 100% fossil free in the production. It's going to be difficult, but we have to aim towards that. It's the same like saying like you shouldn't, you, you, we have to aim about like being out on the streets and not having an alcohol in our bloods. Is it the reality? No, unfortunately, that's not the reality. But we have to aim towards that as well as we have to aim towards a totally fossil free, free bike. So micromobility then, we started to realize that we can, we can do more than just having fun on these bikes. So we started building a, a second platform, which is not as much a motocross as the first one, called the OSA, uh, a platform where it's very modular. So you can bring your, your friends, you can bring your stuff, your surfboard, your skis, whatever you want on the bike. And that's like a uh, 125 um, cc or equivalent to in terms of uh, being a motorcycle or a light motorcycle. And then we introduced the next platform where we realized that we wanted more faster. You wanted to bring the bike with you up in the apartment, get it in through the elevator. We call that the Maka. All the different batteries you can very easily just take off the bike and you can bring it up. People ask us, okay, but where do you charge these? You charge them everywhere you want, in any outlet, wherever. Um, so what, what are our challenges today? The biggest challenge today is the behavior. Uh, we, some talked a little bit about it, but how can we change the ways, and I'm now talking about California and the US, how can we get the American people not using their pickup truck to go down and get the mailbox, kind of? Uh, and and how, how, can we, how can we provide them with these bikes? I use my bike from, from PV, Palo Verdes, to Venice Beach every day. It's like, it's 45 minutes. It's very easy, it's always 45 minutes because you can go in between the cars. 
and then sometimes you have to bring a car, which is fine. Everyone will need a car in the future. Then it can be 35 minutes, but it can also be one hour and 35 minutes. So, and, and you look in all these cars, it's just one and one everywhere. Uh, and so uh, there's, there's a huge potential in using our bikes and similar bikes for getting back and forth to work, but also delivering packages. What if we use uh, N-Rider sitting in the back? We also have Volta trucks and we all have Scania, we have Volvo, everyone's doing electric trucks. What if we have the hub and spoke system where I know that 1.5 um, million US dollars is spent on a yearly basis on Manhattan in parking tickets only FedEx, DHL, and UPS because they, they really don't know or they skip that class on how to park the truck. So what if we then, sorry? Two minutes. Two minutes. Oh, oh, wow. Shit. Sorry. I'm not allowed to say shit either. Sorry. Uh, but what, what if we can use a hub and spoke system, you know, where we have a, a little um, a warehouse in the van and then we use our bikes to go and deliver the packages because it's short stops, it's everywhere, you know. And now together with San Jose and together with other cities, hopefully, I really hope that we can change the way we deliver products, the way we get back and forth to work, uh, even how we we did a, a partnership with the uh, LA where we, in, we checked all the bike lanes all over the city so they were in great conditions. And do you know what? They, they usually do that with Ford's F-150 on the bike lanes. And now they used our bikes. I'm just saying that there's, there's so much potential, I don't really know where to start. Another thing is, of course, starting using our uh, bikes. And we have bikes here if you want to test ride, but it's really not that nice weather. But if you want to have a look, a colleague of mine is right outside. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Eric. That was great. Uh, I just wanted to round up a little bit, uh, a few last sentences about that project. So we're, uh, of course, um, uh, our ambition is to launch it together with the city of San Jose. Uh, and like Eric said, we have a collaboration with uh, 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 medium heavy freight company that will act as mobile distribution centers. Uh, and then of course you would have the bikes going in and out of the more dense um, city park. Uh, but yeah, um, that was all, thank you. Thank you for participating today. Thank you to the panelists and thank you to the ambassador, but also to all of you that have been listening in. I think uh, today has been, from my point of view, very interesting. I hope it has been for you as well. And if it is, has been engaging as well, maybe you want to follow us. You can find us on LinkedIn. Search for Sweden-US Green Transition Initiative. You can also find us on uh, our webpage, gti-sweden.se. And there you can also find the contact information to me and my colleagues. Please reach out to us. It's all about collaboration. Thank you. <laughs>